Alright, it's time to start game two of my used match with Samuel J. Um, now, I just finished sideboarding out my deck. What I did is I cut two Christopher Wilds, now there's only one left in the deck, and I cut out two of my focus prayers, leaving two in, and bumped both my retreat and my banish counts up to four. Now, the reason why I cut the Christopher Wild is because it's not big enough to outclass or do any significant damage to any of Elementals' as allies, which is the main reason why it's useful in most other matchups. And I cut down on the focus pairs because, I mean, he has antimatter, don't get me wrong, but it, Elementalus is limited more by his resources than the amount of cards he's drawing because he can really only play one card per turn. And antimatter is expensive, it uses up three of his resources every turn. So it takes a while for him to get it going. It's a big tempo loss. He can't play any big fatties while he wants to keep using it for a while. And it's perfectly fine by me if he wants to keep dropping Infernal Gargoyles as opposed to bigger threats. Now the reason why I include the banishes and the retreats is pretty obvious. It's for the same reason I cut the other cards out. He's playing Elementalist, so he plays big threats, he relies on them because he pours his shadow energy into them, so I get a sort of Suedo 2 for 1 advantage if I use a banish or a retreat. Um, now here in this situation, I'm debating on whether I should play a card and just take the damage, because if I play removal, first of all I'm taking less damage, and second of all he might think I'm don't have the tidal wave, so it's more likely that he'll play another ally. So what I decide to do is that rather than play the retreat and bounce the guy to his hand, I'll play the vanish now, even though it's not it's better if I'm targeting like furry terrors or things like that. Mostly because of the resource curve, because that way when I tidal wave on turn five, on turn six I'm able to play retreat and Elizabeth Winterborn in the same turn, and that's a huge advantage for me playing ahead like this. Uh, now, unfortunately, I only have two focus pairs in the deck, so that means that's the last one now, because I had to sacrifice one. I'm not going to sack the tidal wave over that, and the two other cards in my hand are my turn six plan. Um, just like I thought, I removed one ally so he played another one he probably would have spent the turn setting up and playing infinity core or antimatter if i didn't do that and here we see his turn five uh last time he played antimatter and activated it and it gave a bit of a tempo loss this time instead of doing that he plays an ally out on the board which is probably the better decision um now here I can't do my plan anymore, not what I wanted to do, because I have to spend this turn blowing up the Antimatter. I don't want to see it being active, because this is the point where he's running out of cards to play, and he can actually spend the resources without worrying too much, because he wouldn't have anything else to use for him anyway. However, he immediately draws another one, so that didn't work out the best for me like I was hoping it would. And I sacrificed my only other focus prayer, so this Antimatter is definitely going to stick. One thing to note is that on the antimatter, he discarded a Leyline Nexus. So that tells me that he brought him in to deal with the King's Prides, and I'm going to have to worry about that. Last game, I dropped a KP, and it's pretty much guaranteed that it's going to stick. This time, not so much, so I'm going to have to worry about that. Um, here, I finally get to do the plan I was doing last time, which is retreat, bounce this guy, and be able to play Winterborn. So that means even though it doesn't have any attack, I have an ally in the play, in play and he doesn't, and I'm drawing cards. He has the Antimatter active, but it's expensive. So again, if he keeps activating it, he can't play big dudes. He can't draw a Plasma Behemoths on me. Uh, he he can't screw me over like that. He'll still, he's still playing his 3cc allies. Not that they're bad, but they're lackluster without buffs on them. So we ha here we have this 2-4 Keldor that's coming down. And I don't have a way in my hand of really dealing with it. But at most, he has a single 5 power attack, right? So I just drew that Puin, and I'm going to just drop it down. And the thing is, he can't do anything about it. Um, he is not Zaladar, he can't lightning strike the Puin away. He only has one attack. The only way he can kill both of my allies is if he plays a mind control. And he'll have to sacrifice a card, play the mind control on the Puin and pump the Keldor, 
or use a shadow energy attack the Puin and mind control the Elizabeth for zero. Either way, it's not the greatest situation for him. So I'm perfectly okay with the how this plans out. Now, uh, what he ends up doing is just playing second ally and trying to assert the board, ignoring Winterborn. Which means that's going to give me a free turn to play the Tidal Wave. And again, I sacrifice to go up to 7 so that I have the two resources spare and I'm able to play a Puin at the same time. Uh, two cards in one turn is how you're going to win this game, essentially. I'm able to wipe the board and come back with an ally. Now, it's not the biggest of allies, mind you, but I do have the King's Pride in hand, so I can shoot down, say, a Keldor if he plays an Unpump for whatever reason, um, because he's been known to help off his pumps in the past. Now, however, he plays Doombringer, and really the only way to have to deal with it is a Tidal Wave. Now, I have two Tidal Waves in my hand, and I'm playing one now, but I'm going to go ahead and just sack the last one anyway. And the reason for that is, again, I want to be always playing an ally next to the Tidal Wave. Because if I don't do that, then my Tidal Wave is not going to do anything. You know, like I'm going to clear the board and then he's going to play an ally and I don't have one. And we're going to be in the same situation all over again. So I go ahead and drop this title and then play my dude. And at this point, I don't have any waves left. But I've spent so many allies by now that I don't care anymore. Because the thing is, is that I only have a certain number of allies in my deck. I only have a certain damage potential that I can fill out. So if I'm in the situation where I'm asserting for this board and I'm forced to tidal wave again because my guys are dying, I probably don't have enough allies in my deck in order to secure a board position and win the game. So at this point, I am no longer in the mindset of playing control and wiping the board and testing the waters and seeing what happens. I'm going full in here. And fortunately for me, he doesn't play any big ally. Last time he played an unpumped Plasma Behemoth here and I was able to drop the King's Pride and kill it. He's not letting me do that this game. But he's giving me a free turn to play hopefully more allies if I can draw them. Because I'd rather not just play the King's Pride this turn. Alright, so I drew the one of Christopher Wilde here. It's not the best ally I could draw, but rather than play it alongside the King's Pride, I'm going to play it alongside the Alvin. Because again, my goal was to have as many allies in play as possible, because if I lose the board position now, I'm never going to get it back. It's literally impossible for me. Um, so I'm, I'm taking a gamble here. It's a big risk. Now, my opponent, if I remember correctly, he's going to drop a Death Mace Thaddeus, so he's going to be able to just kill the Chris outright, and that means I don't have the damage on board to kill the DMT. Now, he's going to mind control the Elden as well, so now I'm in serious trouble here, because he's got an ally on the board, and I don't. And I'm down to two cards in hand, I might not be able to draw what I need in order to turn this around. So this is, this is the pivotal moment here. But I draw a retreat, so I know I'm able to handle whatever comes up. I draw off the Wizen Staff, and I get Elizabeth Winterborn. So that's going to give me the card draw I need to stabilize. Now, he's got an 0-4 in play. He hasn't buffed it, but he has the ability to with Elementalist. So what I'm going to do is, rather than get rid of his guy, because the most it can do is 3 damage, I'm going to play up both of my allies, because his... DMT isn't able by itself to kill either of them. Um, if he plays a furry in terror here, it could be pretty bad for me. And I'm aware of that. Uh, if he plays a Kairos, I'll be able to take it out, but it'll be difficult. I'll wound my guys. But hopefully, I'll have at least one ally in play that I'm able to stick a King's Pride with next turn. Because I have, on eight resources, the King's Pride and Retreat in my hand. So I'm easily able to sack the Puin, play the King's Pride and beat on some dudes, and play the Retreat at the same time. Now, he played the Infernal Gargoyle, but just for the extra one point of damage, he puts a buff on his DMT rather than his other guy. That's a curious thing to me. And I'm here, he's going for my hero. Now I'm down on 14, or 20, because I have the shadow energy if I need it. Um, 
but I'm not too concerned because he's not Zaladar. He doesn't have any direct damage. He's not going to screw me up too badly. Uh, he played the Infinity Core, so he's going to have some life gain, but I haven't really hit him yet. He's still at 24, so it's not too big of a deal because eventually you will get to the point where he'd be activated and not doing anything. Now, right here, this is sort of difficult because I... Like, I really don't want to retreat the DMT. I know it's not a lot of value, but it's still some value that he gets. Um, even though he buffed the DMT, and I'd be able to play the King's Pride and then take out the Gargoyle in one hit, I'd rather put the Gargoyle back in his hand because I can kill it in one hit and take out the DMT here so that it doesn't come back and do extra damage to me. Uh, now I'm attacking with the Alden first because that way I can just heal it straight back up to full because he's already taken some damage and he's going to recover from that. And then I'm just going to send my Elizabeth right at the opponent's face. Um, I'm tempted to attack with the Zana here, but it only has... It, like, it, the weapon only has one durability left on it, so I don't want to waste that. I want to force my opponent to play the mind control. I mean, they could mind control and then I lose the staff, which would be unfortunate, but it's better, like the risk is worth the reward as far as I'm concerned right now, um, because I have some cards but I need more. Now he's got the Leyline Nexus, so this is what I was talking about here, where without a King's Pride and with only so many allies, I only have so much damage potential in my deck. Now granted, I'm drawing three cards a turn and I have two Fleet Footed Messengers in my hand, there's only nine cards left in my deck and one King's Pride left in it. So I'm pretty damn sure that I'm going to be able to draw it. But you never know. Okay, so he's got a Shriek of Vengeance too. It's a good thing I didn't just attack and waste that. Because now he's lost a resource and a card doing that thing. So now I'm only drawing two cards a turn. However, I do a Fleet Foot Messenger reshuffles if I want to. Um, that's not a King's Pride. So I guess I don't have it for one turn. Which is bad for me. Um, now, rather than, um, attack into it and take some damage, I'm just gonna put it back into his deck and go for as many allies on the table as possible, because I don't have a King Sprite anymore. So the only way I'm going to do a significant enough amount of damage to kill my opponent's ally is if I have a crap ton of my own. So I'm just playing as many dudes as I can on the board. here, uh, Elmendalus is taking some real damage for the first time. Now he has the Infinity Core, so he might theoretically be able to recover some of it. Uh, this isn't the end of the game right now. If I draw the King's Pride next turn, it pretty much will be, because I've got four dudes in play plus another hasty in hand. Mind you, that's, I mean, alright, I draw the King's Pride here, so... I pretty much know that if he doesn't do something drastic this turn, I'm going to win this game. Because I'm going to go up, draw my 10th card, sacrifice it, play the King's Pride, play Fleet Footer Messenger, and attack for a ton of damage. Um, we'll see what he gets, though. Because if he, um, say, mind controls the Alden or something like that, then it'd be bad for me. No, he plays a Furry and Terror, which isn't enough to kill any of my allies, and it's only hurting himself, too, because it's doing damage to Elizabeth Winterborn, so now she has an extra two points of attack. Uh, he plays an Infernal Gargoyle, again, not also not going to help. Alright, so I draw a Retreat, which, I mean, would theoretically be useful if I wasn't just going to win this turn. I drop the King's Pride, I have my five dudes, and I beat face for 24 damage, and that's going to be the game. I talked to him with the game afterwards and saying, yeah, the deck is good, but I really wish I didn't play it. And I can understand that sentiment because Zana has all of the tools it needs to do with Elementalis. Unfortunately, that's why sideboards exist. Um, but that all being said, it was a good set of games, and I'll see you all next time. Bow out.